Um, hi Kurt, so today is the Liberty's Pride game, um, and I guess I've just been reflecting on what queer culture in the WNBA looks like, and so I just want to ask you, how would you describe what queer culture in the W looks like, and how have you seen it evolve over time? Well, I didn't know it was Pride game, so it's fun. Um, you know, for me, it, it, it's a league that's um, very inclusive. Um, it's a league that um, is made up of both gay and straight players, gay and straight coaches. Um, you know, the diversity outside of sexual orientation is outstanding in this league. And there's great respect and camaraderie amongst our players. As hard as they compete together, uh, they really are a sisterhood. There is a real bond between these 144 players or thereabouts, um, our numbers. Um, and there's such respect uh, around the league for each other with the diversity. So um, again, I, I can't believe that there's a league, a men or women, a professional league that has um, you know, just greater diversity than the WNBA, and it's something certainly we should champion and be proud of. Um, Kurt, I think you were you were joking coming out of here pregame the other day that you weren't getting any Liberty questions. So, uh, ask you, what, what is your impression of this year's version, especially as compared to last year? It's basically the same cast except for the bench, really. Um, what, what strengths do you see at this time? Yeah, I think I've been, I've been around the league long enough that one of the things that you noticed is continuity and chemistry matters. And um, you can tell when teams or their core groups have played together um, for longer. And you know, last year, the, you know, the, the super team you know, mantra became you know, a big calling card last year around the league. And it just doesn't happen just because you put a bunch of great players together. And so the biggest thing that I see is just a comfortability, a continuity, a chemistry. Um, you're in your second year with a coaching staff, you're in a second year with each other, you understand each other's players' strengths and weaknesses, you understand how to play off of each other. And I just think you notice that with this uh, New York team. Um, and, you know, this New York team has a way of separating in fourth quarters in close games, you know, and so um, they just know how to win at the end of games. And that just doesn't happen when you first put together a new group. And I think that's, you know, has something to do with them being together second year. Personally, I obviously um, will always be a huge advocate, fan, friend, colleague of JJ. And uh, just, you know, it's, you see JJ uh, in great shape. Uh, playing with her motor that you saw her play with in her MVP season for us back in Connecticut. Um, and, you know, like she, um, she looks like an MVP candidate, candidate, and when she plays like that, it's just a New York di different dimension of a team, in my opinion. Hey, Kurt, it seemed the other day that you made them make plays down the stretch to beat you. I'm guessing you watched film last day or so. What changes can you make to potentially make it tougher for them to make those plays? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think the caveat of, of yesterday or, you know, the game on Thursday was um, that 30-point third quarter was disappointing. Some of it, the run that happened to initially get them going was off our turnovers, which has been our Achilles heel, and they were self-inflicted. It wasn't necessarily their pressure, um, but... You know, we made a big run back at him in the fourth quarter. We had between four and a half or just under five minutes to the two and a half minute mark, almost two and a half minutes. We had the ball multiple times down six, uh, where we missed some foul shots to get it to four. We missed the three to get it to three. We missed the layup to get it to four. And I think they could have really felt us. And, uh, you know, so we made it. It was a real game um, when you look at those from the five minute to the two and a half minute mark. And we just needed to go make some winning plays there. It could have been a real interesting finish, but to their credit, um, when we didn't take advantage of those opportunities, they were able to respond and eventually make some big plays and big shots. 
Um, and that's the thing, you know, like in this league, you just show um, these swings. You miss a layup, they make a three, that's a five point swing. You miss two foul shots, they make a basket, there's a four point swing. And when your, your uh, line of winning and losing is a little bit thinner because of injuries and because of a young building roster, you have to avoid some of these opportunities where these swings happen naturally where just a simple miss layup can turn into a five point swing. Um, and that miss layup turns into a three and we were able to show our players some of their points off of our turnovers, but even more importantly, what people don't talk about, some of their possessions after we miss layups and how that turned into four and five point swings. So if we can eliminate some of those, do some good things, be curious to see if Laney or Sloop's playing tonight, <clears throat> which would be great for us to continue to learn. Um, but we're anxious to get back out there and compete. We felt like we did a lot of really good things. No one feels sorry for an injured team. No one feels sorry for a young building team. Um, and we don't feel sorry for ourselves. So we, we look forward to competing and uh, finishing this road trip in our ninth game in our 18th day. Mm -hmm. Our ninth game in our 18th day tonight. Hey coach, you talked about the connection with JJ. And recently Sandy Brondella just talked about her growth as a passer, as a playmaker. And she said that she's always had that ability. Just how have you seen JJ's growth as a playmaker over the years? Yeah, always been a, a very good ball handler for her size, especially in the open floor, can see over and, and see things. She's got good knowledge of the games, which makes her a good passer. Here, maybe more than our heyday in Connecticut, they're playing in some five out uh, buckets, which is modernized basketball. So they're in you know three to four major NBA actions, which the WNBA has all stolen now. So she's in that position more than she's ever been and you can see her making plays and uh, but it, to us that have coached her and known her uh, she's always been capable of that back. Um, you touched on the chemistry and the continuity of the liberty i guess i was wondering if you could be like a little more specific and can be general around the lead too like what are you kind of picking up tangibly from like a basketball schematic standpoint when you C18 with the continuity? Is it how they cut? Is it how they rotate and close out on defense? Like what are the kinds of things that you're noticing on film um, of a team in a second, third, fourth year together? Yeah, I mean, this could be a dissertation. We could be here a while, but um, you know, some, some of the things that are natural is, is that you just understand tendencies. And so, you know, this player likes to cut um, from the 45 or this player, you know, will be in the corner in these actions and understand JJ, you know, is going to do this then. And so it's just a lot of getting used to playing with each other. And also you feel it at the defensive end. And so they cover for each other. They, they have each other's backs in certain actions where you see that there's a coverage and there may be slippage, but they have each other's back. Um, they try to help out Sabrina in actions defensively, and you can tell there's intent on these are areas where you know players can be successful, but these are areas where we got to have each other's back, and the congestion and the flow to those actions are going to help specific players. So um, it's hard to you know like show you it, it you know, but when you watch it, you truly feel it as a coach. Um, hello, Coach. New York's defense um, has held opponents to a season low, a league low, um, in second chance points. How will the addition of Queen Egbo help ensure um, you capitalize on those offensive opportunities? Yes, yeah, certainly they're um, you know such a good defensive rebounding team, and they limit uh, teams go you know one and done. And that's why the other night it was really important for us to be one of the few teams that shot over fifty percent from the field against them it put us in position um, to have a successful night because we had a successful field goal percentage night. Um, our main offensive bucket, we didn't have a great night in, but we did a lot of things uh, differently in that game and made adjustments and, and we made plays. It's not easy to get offensive rebounding. Uh, excited about the addition to Queen. She got in the middle of the night. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> It's really difficult for hardship players to get acclimated in 24 hours without a practice. We didn't have a shoot around, mm -hmm. so we had a film session. I, you know, I walked through you know some things with her. But what are you going to teach her in 15 minutes about our 78 plays? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know that doesn't even start the defensive game plan. But what I know 
and what I told her, and I've told people that on hardships before in her situation and who she is, I said, when in doubt tonight, remember you're ours. All right? Run, rebound, roll, rim protect, and be relentless. You can always have your ours. If you don't know the playbook, if you don't know anything, she can be that, and offensive rebounding is something that she can help us with. But uh, when she's out there, I'm just going to continue to remember, remind her, we don't expect you to know what the heck's going on, but we expect you to remember your ours tonight. Okay, we're going to end with one last question on Zoom from Rashawn. Hey, Coach. Uh, sticking with Queen, what are some attributes you've seen from her throughout her career uh, that you're kind of excited, kind of led to you know this time? Yes, it, you know, I've always been a fan of Queen. Um, you know, rookie year started in Indiana, obviously brought up the bench after they drafted Aaliyah Boston that second year, but was all rookie um, that first year with Indiana in that rebuilding uh, time. And one of the things that stood out was her physicality. Her physicality in Washington bothered us last year, even off the bench when they were dealing with some injuries. She went toe to toe with NECA. Um, she went toe to toe with Derek and Azare last year, and her physicality at times bothered us. So, I believe she can bring physicality. I think she can bring some rim protection. She can bring some rebounding. We're back to those offers again. For some. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I like some of the stuff through the years. It's, she's gone from a starter her rookie season to a role player, and now. It, she's navigating like a lot of young pros do to find her place. Um, she was in a situation that became, it was really easy for her rookie year. They needed her, they plugged the hole, her and Alyssa came in as college teammates and just you know were able to fill that front court for Indiana. Now she's navigating where she's been on multiple teams where she's had to be a role player and trying to find her niche and again, that's that's the winding road of a lot of young pros. And you know, Queen's challenge is taking advantage of some of these opportunities, finding another home, and carving out her role um, because it's not going to be like her rookie year most places for her right now. So excited to work with her. Excited to throw a lot at her um, in, in this opportunity for her to be a hardship player for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.